As we near the end of Black History Month on this last day in February, tonight we are taking a moment to honor those who fought for civil rights. Our Fox 26 photojournalist Darlene Janik Ferris spoke with a man in Galveston responsible for leading desegregation efforts with his classmates when they were only teenagers. Hey, Hi. Natalie, how are you? I'm good, so good to have you. My pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you. Is this the original tile, or did the, you have uh, to have so it redone? The, this is original tile, uh -huh. original stool refurbished. Uh -huh. My dad has always been an, 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 a lover of architecture and history, and he was very excited to bring back this piece of history, and we were very honored. I remember we used to walk past the place and look in, knowing that we we couldn't go in and sit down. People were beginning to sit in, students and in other cities. We had the same type of humiliation, and therefore I felt that we ought to do our part. I see Franklin Coverson, I think that's him. He was there. Perry Waddles, Frank Wave, Floyd Robinson. Did I pass the word among the ones that I had identified as leaders of this that tomorrow was the day? The one that we went into as we marched in, which was Woolworth, and there was this uh, uh, Caucasian woman behind the counter, and she said, and I remember this like it was yesterday, I ain't serving no n****s. And she went and told the manager. The manager came, he observed the situation, and turned off the lights, and as people would get up, they would take up the stool. And so that's how everything started. Well, we had gone to sit in at, at the Dairy Cream, which was on Broad, Broadway. The other employees that were in tried to block us or keep us from coming in, but we barged past them and sat down and asked to order food. Eventually, they threatened us that they were gonna call the police, and we were like, go ahead. And uh, the police came and escorted us to the police station. I was really traumatized on Stewart Beach, I really was. I really didn't realize people could hate you that much because of their color. Before we knew it, we were surrounded by Caucasians, and then uh, the uh, fire truck came to put the water hose on us. We were high school students. We were teenagers. And we were, at some point in time, we wanted to eat. And we were at lunch counters protesting people who were not serving us. And I had made no arrangement. My plan didn't get to the point of making arrangements for eating if they didn't arrest us. Our parents, the, the churches, the uh, lodges, the fraternal orders, they sent carloads of food down there, more food than we could eat. As a way of saying, we support you. They were once children. This, this was going on for 150 years of discrimination, of not being able to eat at these lunch counters. And our lunch counters were integrated in April of 1960. It's the first city in the South to desegregate under protest. I've done my research. It's published in my, my book, and it was anywhere from three to six months or longer after the lunch counters in Galveston were integrated. The whole city structure of Galveston was changed. It wasn't just to integrate the downtown lunch counter. It was to integrate the lunch counters everywhere, the movie theaters, the bowling alley, the entertainment operations, and everything that there was in Galveston. We wanted a change to come. We wanted equality. It's a day-to-day -day operation. It's a struggle. People are still being killed today. They're hardened protesters against everything that we, we stood for and the ground that we gained. So it, it's a freedom and the fight to be free and full equality, it's we're still in pursuit. And they were so brave. Well, many of the men and women who led the effort were part of the Central High School class of 1961. And we've learned they, they plan to hold a reunion coming up on April 22nd, and they say other classes are welcome too.